We're going to call our uh, 645 public hearing to order. Uh, we're going to call our 645 public hearing to order. Uh, this is for uh, unsafe building at 7853, 7855, 7861 Cincinnati Avenue, 45249, also known as 12020 Fifth Avenue. Um, who's, going to, who's going to, okay, John, you're up. Okay. Thank you. So one colloquial known as 12020 Fifth Avenue um, was determined as an unsafe structure um, due to a fire um, in 2023. So a resolution being passed, um, and I have pictures as well. The fire department uh, determined that the structure and conditions present um, on the property to be unsafe and structurally defective. Um, so a notice was sent out. So the resolution was passed on January 23rd of 2024, and an unsafe structure notice um, letters were sent on January 29th. Um, to the property owner and um, certified and regular um, as well as uh, posted on the house um, on the 29th so uh, on February 6th uh, received a call from uh, Bobby O'Neill um, basically inquiring about the letter that was submitted um, and asking for uh, time and asking for a public hearing so uh, they the applicant uh, came in and we spoke with them and um, there was uh, some some question as to the process of things and um, they e expressed um, basically concern in wanting some time to uh, amend or um, you know fix the issue so uh, they are actually here tonight is the applicant and then, um, Kevin, what? Um, so you you made contact, correct? Uh, when you, Kevin, let me swear you send notice. And okay. are you going to testify? Yes, we're are you here. here? Everybody's going to testify. Please stand and raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So if you got it, yes, I sir. do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Please continue. <clears throat> So as part of the re as part of the resolution, um, the applicant agreed to come in uh, to request time. Um, you know, Jeff had did Jeff mentioned that we would look to see if the if the property was abated by the owner, that um, proper uh, permits were acquired, such as a demolition permit, um, you know, for MSD and uh, water, and so. Uh, also making sure that the street was was clear and clean after um, and and during that process so um, the applicant um, I, I guess the applicant would like to speak on his behalf okay. any questions from the board so far so what was the date of the fire uh, that was one thing uh, through investigation that I was unable to find I know that it was sometime in 2023 um, but on the on the um, from the fire marshal from Doug um, as part of the resolution it doesn't give the exact date of the fire just that it's um, currently in disrepair and unsafe as a structure do we have photographs yes and I'll show the photographs here now okay so this is um, from the side of the property uh, and then from the front of the property and also, the um, abandoned, inoperable vehicle um, in the driveway, BMW 5 Series, um, that has received notice as well. And uh, Kevin posted directly on the vehicle, um, which he can tell you about. Um, that was done at the same time that the um, notice was posted for the house as well. Um, but as you can tell, it's... Uh, <clears throat> These are all pictures from uh, 2000. Okay, we got we got new ones. Okay, mm -hmm. yep. thank you. January of 24. So this is where Kevin posted. That's why I posted on the front of the vehicle. And Kevin, did you make contact at this time with anyone at the house? I did not. Okay. You posted in front of the house as well. I did right? as well. It's there. Right. It's right there. Yeah. 
And you took the photographs of the house? I did. And when did you take those? Uh, I, I believe I took these photographs right here on January 29th. 2024? 2024, excuse me, yes. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, if, if you'd like to come up, give us your name and address for the record, please. <clears throat> Bobby O'Neill, 8170 Maywood Drive. Are you the owner of the structure at that property? My father is the owner. He passed away um, just within the month before it caught on fire. He, it was being rented. It, there was a tenant, a family who was living in it when it caught fire. Okay. When did it catch fire? It was the end of, end of July. July, end of July, or right at the beginning of August, summer, right at the end of a couple of weeks. I don't end have the exact date with me. End of July 2023? Yes. Does anybody live in the structure now? No. Does it still look like it did, does in that photograph? Yes. There's no tape on it or no. I, no, I wouldn't protecting I, it. No, I. Well, I was just under the and I mean I was I was under the impression I needed to get per demolition permit or whatever else to be able to really do anything to it. I mean I just just was here. It was just a week or two ago that I was here, but I didn't know exactly what I could do. What I was what I was able to do. That's kind of why I'm here. I just wanted to make sure the structure still looks the same. Yes. As it does yes, sir. <clears throat> so, do you have any intentions of uh, taking taking this down? Yes, that's what. Yeah, that's what. What's, what's I your game plan? I, I wonder. I was going to go get a permit. I just talked with a, one of these gentlemen. Uh, on the, they called me since I had been here, and uh, they told me I need to have, get a permit and everything beforehand. I, I was employed at a demolition company for for several years. I was going to talk to my, you know, talk to my boss there. And go about it like that. I was gonna get a demolition permit here. I mean, I, I I got the address where I got it, where I need to get it from. As long as uh, if that was, I don't know if you guys needed to approve it before I could do that or what. But that's what I was. That's what I was wanting to do. Get a just get a demolition permit and take and take it down. So John, you've been working with them to get this accomplished. Yeah, uh, Mr. O'Neill did come in, and um, Jeff and I kind of explained that process of going down to Hamilton County to acquire the building permit. Um, and gave him the uh, contact information, but um, I uh, attempted to uh, call and did not receive uh, any response, but that was um, earlier today. So if, if the property owner, Mr. O'Neill, would not be taking that down, what would be our normal course of action here? What would be our, what would be our timetable? How, how would we proceed? If nothing were to happen, or, or we say we hadn't mm -hmm. heard from Mr. O'Neill, what would our timing be? So we do have uh, multiple quotes all around the ten thousand dollar range uh, to tear down the, um, the the residence, the main residence, the structure in question. Um, it it varies from ninety six hundred to ten thousand dollars. Okay. So uh, in the event that it was not abated by the property owner, um, then. Uh, one of our one of the contractors um, would tear down the structure, and then it would it would def, it would be um, placed as a lien on the property under the property owner's name. So so, your father passed away. Who's the current owner? Right now, it's, he's still just he's the only he's the only name on the uh, on it as the owner. Okay. So it's in the state. Uh. Yeah, I, yes. I mean, I, I haven't went forward with anything with that. I don't know exactly what I need to do with that either, uh, moving forward. But they, yeah, I have to, I have to, I have to figure that out. Was your father married when he died? No. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I have one sister. Yes. She was here with me last time. Uh, the other day when I came in and talked to these gentlemen, she was going to be here today, but she was, she's she's uh, under the weather. Your father have a will? No. So then you two are probably on the property. Right, then, right. right. Okay. So just, just out of curiosity, this was July of 23. Uh, we are now almost in March of 24. Uh, why has nothing been done? <coughs> the 
in regards to this? What, what were your plans? If, I mean, if we went to send you a letter, uh, how long is this going to sit? Um, I don't. I can't answer that. Uh, to be for sure. To be sure. I mean, I. I didn't, now I wasn't. I was just gonna go down there and clean up. Like I didn't. I wasn't even under under you know, I honestly didn't even know it was this bad. I seen. I got pictures in the mail. I didn't even know it was this, that it was that bad. I thought I was gonna be able to, uh, you know, repair it. And I thought I was gonna need to get down there and seal it up. And uh, no, I hadn't. You hadn't seen it. I had seen when it. When did you fire. When did you first see it? Uh. I just seen it then, uh, October maybe, or November when I got pictures in the mail. I hadn't been down there. My sister had been down there and when it caught fire with the fire department, I wasn't down there. But and I saw so I, I just thought it was going to be able to be sealed up. I didn't think it was that bad until I seen it and it was that bad. I knew that it was going to have to be knocked mm -hmm. over, you know, cleaned up, knocked over, that it wasn't repairable. Respectfully, I, again, when, when did your father pass away, if you don't mind respect, uh, me asking? Was it, oh, do you know what day? Yeah, it was the end of July. So, okay, so it was in... Correct, right, right. 2023, okay. right. It was about, yeah, it was like, I think it was about three weeks before the house caught fire, or two weeks. <clears throat> so since November, when you've realized that it really had to be taken down, what action have you taken? I haven't done anything. I, I got in touch with here, and I talked to these guys last two weeks ago. That's all I've done. Okay. So you indicated that you, you had some some connections with the demolition company. I mean, yeah. If you were to, are you suggesting that you wanted to take care of this yourself? What's your timeline? Um, I don't know, a few, a couple months maybe. I don't know, I, I would definitely want, I want to get, if I can get a permit here in the next week or so, because I think I need to get that to start. I haven't contacted them yet, but I have the information. Uh, I'd like to get the permit then and then start cleaning it up. It'd just be, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I, you know, from my perspective, one of my biggest concerns is, is the, the unsafe nature of the structure and the, and the environment around it. I mean, it's 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 obviously been there for quite some period of time, and to wait a couple more months is is a little troublesome. Um, particularly if the fire department has already gone out and said this is clearly it, it needs right. to be remedied. I mean, so I don't another couple to... months is is a difficult timetable for me to kind of get comfortable okay. with. Okay, yeah, I don't mean a couple more months before it gets started. I don't know how exact long it'll take. To bring, you know, to bring it down and clean, get it cleaned up. But I mean, I'm a, I plan on doing it as fast as as soon as possible. I mean, I'm not meaning I'm not going to be started for a couple. I didn't mean that. I don't know if it'll take just a week or two weeks or what it, exactly it'll take to clean it up. Due to the safety, though, and the condition of this, can uh, do you have the means to say fence this off with some construction fence yes. or something immediately? Yeah. I mean, yeah, this I should have been done a long time ago, yeah. really, because it's. Right. Last thing we wanted some kids to get in there and end up getting hurt. Yes, sir. Yeah, I can do that. Whose bicycles in the in the in the? Uh, um, I would I would probably I would get, I would guess the, the there was a family that was renting it. Okay. And um, I would I would say it's probably theirs. Well, so I believe uh, before on the, when we had someone else do this, we went ahead and passed the resolution, but then we gave them a t some time to make sure that they started on it. I mean, I'd be willing to do something like that, but I would not want to not pass the resolution, I don't think. I, I, I agree. I think I agree with that. Um, I would agree. I think we need to put some, some time parameters on it due to the safety concerns surrounding this property. Look, if you, get a, if you get a guy out here to clean this up, it's going to take him a day. Okay. Okay. He's gonna, yeah. he's gonna he's gonna knock that down in about 15 minutes, and he's gonna scoop it up and be on his way. Okay, so. that's that's more the top. That's more kind of what I was thinking. But I mean, I know that I don't know. I know I, I was gonna get a couple dumpsters and get you know a bobcat or something like that, and that's what I would probably was thinking probably within that week or two. But first, I mean, he was the guy I talked to. He was saying you know going through it, tearing a bunch of it out. I mean, just to recycle stuff or whatever. So that might be another. It might be a week or two ish, but yeah. I, I didn't think no longer that. Like, honestly, myself, but I mean, I I, I just was. I was Did just you file for a, a permit? No, not yet. How long does that take, Jeff? I don't know what their turnaround time is. Um, a couple, probably about two months ago. It was currently at one to two weeks. So, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, first of all, you have to go in there and do something to this. Okay. You got to put a fence around yeah, I, it. I can do. I can go put a fence around it. And that needs to be done 
in the next few days. Okay. Because this is a safety issue, big time. Secondly, I mean, I'm not opposed to passing a resolution with a contingency that the, that, it's, that it's completely vacated in 30 days. That gives you one month to find somebody, bring out the equipment, and tear it down. Okay. We already passed the resolution to tear it down. Yeah. He's requested a hearing, and the finding at the end of the hearing would be, I think, a motion that the place is unsafe and unsecure and give him X amount of time to tear it down. Or okay. To do. Okay. Okay. So I think we all agree that the place is unsafe and unsecure. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Anybody have any other questions? Uh, my only questions would be about permits, uh, not only demolition, but you'll have to get MSD involved for the sewer because that'll have to be right. disconnected. Right, I'm and right. Anything with Duke. Right, I've been, yeah, I was also, they also, uh, these gentlemen, they also uh, uh, told me about that. I didn't know if I, I, I figured when I got the demolition permit, I'd probably be able to get the information I needed about that probably through them or if there's somewhere else that I need to, to get it from, maybe I can get it from you guys. Yeah, you'd probably have to talk to MSD for, for the sewer. You'll okay. have to talk to Duke for the gas and electric. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that's uh, the electric, the sewage, and what else would not need to be capped off? Water? Water and Water. gas. If there's if there's natural gas to it, that okay. would be Duke also. Okay. So okay. So electric, gas, sewage, and water. Okay. So do you think you can get that done in thirty days? Yeah. Cleaned yeah, up. I, yeah. I de yeah. That's, that's definitely. Yeah. That's my plan. I definitely want to. I definitely want to get it done. I don't want to. I mean, I want to be able to clean it up myself. So I think. So I think we're talking about having it safed off with a fence. Immediately. Immediately. Within three days. Okay. By, the end, by, by the end of business yeah. Friday. Okay. Yep. Yes. And then 30 <clears throat> days to obtain all necessary permits and demolish the structure and remove all debris and clean up and what have you. Okay. Everybody feel good about that? I do. I do. Yeah. do we need a motion the, for that? No, I think what you could do is you could continue the public hearing in progress. Okay. Move to continue <clears> the public <throat> hearing in progress. And come back at thirty at your meeting. That's about thirty days away. Then get an update as to where things stand. And if there's no progress made, then you can order its immediate destruction. So that would be uh, March nineteenth. Right. Okay, I got another hearing on March nineteenth. So March nineteenth, we expect this to be completely cleaned. Okay. Okay. And if not. We'll be, we will be back in our meeting on March 19th here. Okay. And we have the ability then to order an outside company to come in and just tear it down. Right. Okay. And, and assess the property. Okay. I'm going to lean on it. Thank you. A fence by the end of the week. Yes, ma'am. End of Friday. So we need a motion to continue the public hearing until March <clears throat> I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing for 12020 5th Avenue until March 19, 2024. Second. 6 Same time. Thank you. Motion is second. Greg, roll call, please. Oh. Uh, Mr. Kellams? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Ms. Schwegman? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's really important to get that fence up Thanks. by Friday. Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay, that is continued. Uh, we want to get everybody else. We want to get everybody else in.
Okay, we're going to call our regular meeting to order. If everybody would please rise for invocation. This evening read by uh, Trustee Kellis. Tonight's invocation is from Dr. Larry Cornett from Bethel Baptist Temple. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you for life and the, for the privilege to live in this great land. We ask you to bless our nation and our leadership. We pray your blessings upon Sycamore Township, and we ask that you make our community a lighthouse in the city. We pray for each person in every department. May we work together in unity and seize every opportunity to encourage one another. We ask that you guide each decision that must be made this evening, and we ask for your wisdom and direction as we look to the future. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, if Mr. Dieters would note that all three trustees are present. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes from February 6th. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Mr. Dieter. Mr. Kellams? Ms. Schwagman? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Next item on the agenda is public comments. Do we have anybody who wishes to speak this evening? Who's, who's got the list? Okay. Uh, Mr. Brian Hag, 4106 Judd Drive. Okay, Mr. Hag, you're up for four yeah. minutes. Set the, uh, you got the timer on, John? <coughs> My name is Brian Hag. I live at 4106 Judd Drive. I'm here again and requesting the same as I did last month that the trustees would look at repealing the Home Rule Township Zoning Law. According to the law, when it was first enacted in 1991, it was supposed to have been offered three years later in a repeal vote, the same way it was voted in. And that repeal was never offered to the township. I've given uh, Mr. Kellams all the entire sites of the law and uh, proving all of this. So that's, uh, I was hoping he would have shared that with the rest of you all and uh, been able to. Uh, determine whether or not this can be placed on the ballot for the spring uh, spring issues. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is uh, I was in receipt from a letter from Concerned Citizens of Sycamore Township a while back about uh, the reasons why we had to get rid of Tom James as trustee because he wasn't transparent and he wasn't trustworthy. Um, since you've gotten rid of Mr. James, um, You've gone b back and uh, replaced Greg Bickford as, as the uh, township administrator. And uh, after paying him $250,000 to basically take a vacation and leave the township, that looks like a conflict of interest. And, and really, why are they spending a quarter of a million dollars of township funds to get rid of somebody and then pay him another, the greatest salary in the township to come back and work for you? It doesn't make any sense. And how could Rob Porter do all this stuff as one trustee? It doesn't take more than one vote of three trustees to approve a thing. How could he have done that all on his own? Somebody colluded or worked with him to help him do everything that he did. He uh, fired Mr. Bickford, hired his buddy, uh, and then gave him a raise after he uh, started working for you. Why isn't this brought out before the rest of the township? I never heard anything about it until I get this letter from somebody you can't even contact by the phone. All it is is that it comes in a letter uh, envelope with a post office box on it. But there's no way to contact these people. I tried on the internet and you can't do that. What's going on here with this? You know, like I said, there, there's a petition here. All you have to do is get people to sign it or the home rule law can go away if the trustees decide to put it up for the ballot. And I, I'm glad that Mr. Kellams gave an invocation tonight because it shows me that you people believe in Jesus Christ. I do too. He's my Savior and my Lord. But there's a lot of things going on in this country that are in violation of our Constitution. We don't need bigger government. We need smaller government. 
the home rule law, all it, all it's supposed to do under, under the, the guidelines is to determine what to do with vacant properties when you're first developing them. That's what the law says. But I violated a law that puts my property line, I can't even build anything on it for 150 feet, 100 <coughs> feet off the, the street. I brought copies of the U.S. Constitution. I was going to leave with every one of you here because what we're doing here is violating my Fourth Amendment right to uh, not be, um, let's see, particularly the place to be searched and the person's the thing to be seized, uh, to be confronted with the witnesses against him. I was recently taken to court and lost $500 to the court system because uh, Mr. Kevin Clark said that there were multiple violations, multiple complaints against my property that were uh, entrusted to him. He couldn't show me anyone or tell me anyone that complained against me, but he admitted, he told me that he filed the complaint himself. Yet in court, he said after multiple complaints from neighbors, I filed this against Mr. Heck. And okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. The court system didn't bother to, that, uh, the fact that uh, the judge didn't even sign the complaint. And therefore, admitting to me that he doesn't really care. All they're looking for is money. <clears throat> Mr. Haig, I'm, I'm just going to clear up the record because uh, um, you distorted a lot of the, a lot of what actually happened. So I'm going to go ahead and help you with this. but. Um, Rob Porter had nothing to do with the termination of Greg Bickford. He uh, was the fiscal officer. He's the he's the fiscal officer, and he uh, uh, had had no votes. There were two votes by Tom James and Jim LaBarbera. They both voted to terminate Greg Bickford, and um, uh, enter into a, some kind of a separation agreement, which was their way of terminating him, and. Um, I voted no on that. So for the record, what you said that Rob Porter had, no, the trustees didn't vote on it, the trustees did vote on it, that the other two that are no, no longer with us both voted to terminate Greg Bickford. So that's, the, for the record, I want to clear that up because what you said wasn't true. So. Okay, well, the, the reason I can't understand is if, if you pay that much to get rid of the man, why have you hired him back? Because it was a bad, it was a bad termination, that's why. Then I, I think that maybe the, the well, the, the refunded two hundred fifty thousand dollars back to the town. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely not. He had a contract, and I'm not going to argue with you. He had a contract. He was terminated, and the the contract paid him under those under that under that agreement. So uh, why would he why would he give the money back? Number one and number two, the the residents already decided it was a bad decision. They terminated the the uh, the trustee position for both of the two that voted in favor of it. So I think that pretty much speaks for itself. All right. Well, why did, why did the hearing? That's there's nothing in the minutes. I haven't seen anything where they said they just said, the last time I was here they said congratulations you got your job. I, did, I was just kind of curious about that. Yeah. Well, now you know. Now you know the rest of the story, as they say. Okay. But thanks for coming tonight. Appreciate right, it. But I, you know, I, I would really like you to consider what I've proposed. Okay, to already, great. You know, Thank you. And get back with me if you can. All right. If it's going to be considered. Sure. Put on the okay, next item, Sheriff Patrol Report. I don't have anything to report tonight. Okay, any questions for that no report? Next item on the agenda is EMS and fire. Chief. Howdy. If you pass this down for the trustees, um, <clears throat> Mike Kramer went through a, a very good course. It's called the Ever Course, and it's active violence emergency response training. <clears throat> They've been getting very good results from it, and basically, it's a um, in today's world we have to be prepared for a lot of strange things, and this class is a class that we're going to offer to the businesses of the township and um, it's basically how to handle if you have a gunman or an active shooter in your in your place and there's there's ways of preparing and setting your business up to avoid and then it also goes into uh, the uh, stop the bleed type of thing which most of the classes that's always been out there has either been um, the uh, 
the act of violence type of class or a stop to bleed, but this co this class combines the two together. So it's uh, it, it's 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 a it's a pretty popular class right now. It's very modern, and um, with uh, with Mike having the certification for the training of this, we're going to offer this to the to the businesses in the township. Residents can be trained, but it's more geared toward a business. Okay. So just let you know that that's what we're up to on that. Okay. That's all I have. Anything else? That's Any it. questions for the chief? Okay. Next item on the agenda, planning and zoning report. Yeah, uh, we have a resolution imposing a one-year uh, moratorium on a digital signs within the Sycamore Township. Basically, the uh, digital signs. Stuff on the screens. Yeah. So. I apologize. I don't have the. I don't have the agenda um, on my file. So I'm trying to. Is it resolution 2024-14? I apologize. That last one, yeah. yeah. This is the one. That was, oh, that was the, uh, this is the previous case. structure, yeah. yeah. You go to your email. You should have it in your email. Yeah, it's in my email. I can give the board some background since this started yep. back in 1997. <laughs> you know, the, the code talks about you can't have flashing or moving signs, so never really defined a digital sign. And, and over the years, we kind of we really didn't do much with them. We sent them to BZA, or they just kind of died on the final. Digital signs become so prevalent now, and our code being over 30 years old, it needs to have some changes made to it. Um, so this is brought forward the board for its consideration, so we can study the issue better and make sure we understand how it's going to affect the neighborhoods, uh, affect the business. Because if you've seen the dig digital billboards that are on the highways, you can see them from a long way away. So if we put a digital sign up in a, in a, in a business, how is that going to affect the residents around us? So this just gives us an opportunity to uh, study this, or it gives plan zoning opportunity to study it and then uh, put some sensible regulations in because I don't know that you're going to stop the digital signs because it's, it's here to say at least we'll have common sense regulations to it that will, uh, will help uh, unify what we've got. Nobody wants us to look like the Las Vegas trip. Not to mention safety issues. Absolutely. I was just going to say safety and, and brightness and everything else it's, it's a different world out there for sure. Okay. <clears throat> So do we need a motion? I didn't mean to cut you off, Kevin. I just want to see if we can get that up. That's you got all. Anything to add? Uh, basically, uh, Mr. Bickford said everything <laughs> I needed to say about it. So um, it's not aimed at current digital signs. It's just new. Yeah. Stations. Yeah. Basically, uh, John, you have pictures, that, don't you? Right there. I do. Um, we we have some pictures that we want to show you of uh, more of what the signs actually. Yeah, as you can see, like these sign the signage that you see, you know, more of like that. Online bill pay would be flashing and moving and stuff. Those are more of your signs that you got that are out today than they were yesterday, if you know what I mean. And this is what we would like, uh, you know, as Mr. Bickford just said, uh, a year of time to uh, study this and get the proper language that we would like to put into the code to prevent these from happening. Great. <clears throat> Yeah, so, here, um, huh? I have it. how about a, um, a, uh, a motion? We should read the title. I've got the title. I've got you the got the, you've got it there? You want to read it? Yeah, I've got it. Okay. okay. I mean, I, you got it? Go. This is the, the resolution imposing a one-year uh, moratorium on digital signs within Sycamore Township, Ohio. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? I think it's a good idea. I think we, you know, we 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 kicked this around, kicked this can around a little bit for years, and uh, it's time to uh, take definitely take action. So uh, there's a lot of the zoning code that needs adjusted, but we have to pick it off slowly. And this is probably the biggest outlier out there that we can get a handle on. Good. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Com comments, uh, Mr. Dieters. Mr. Kellums. Aye. Mr. Schweigman. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Kevin, anything else down there? 
Uh, we have nothing else to, to okay. report. You're gonna, uh, do you have a, do you have a printed copy for us to sign? Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Next item on the agenda is roads maintenance recreation report. Yeah. Stevie. Good evening. Uh, I have two resolutions for the board to consider. The uh, first resolution is a resolution authorizing a contract for the purchase of a plasma cutter and mobile welder with included options and the disposal of an existing plasma cutter dispensing with a second reading. This, uh, this was uh, budgeted and appropriated in our uh, 24 budget. Uh, so. Uh, um, we uh, received proposals, and this is uh, what we are presenting. Any qu any other questions? I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Is this a, a new purchase or replacement, or is this a new piece of equipment? Uh, this is a replacement for our existing uh, plasma uh, cutter and an upgrade uh, for our welder. Nice. Yep. And we okay. will uh, dispose of the uh, plasma cutter as needed. Motion to approve. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? Mr. Dieters. Mr. Kellams. Aye. Mr. Schweig. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. The uh, second resolution is a resolution uh, authorizing a contract for the purchase of a T770 T4 Bobcat compact track loader with included options and dispensing with a second reading. Uh, this will be through the uh, State of Ohio Cooperative Purchase Program, which Sycamore Township is a member. Uh, this is, uh, again, this was uh, appropriated in the 2024 budget. Uh, the uh, Ohio Cooperative Purchasing Program uh, is a discounted price of 30% off MSRP. Did you say uh, dispensing with a second reading, declaring an emergency? Did I hear that? Do we have to do we have to declare an emergency on that or no? No. No. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Mr. Dieters. Mr. Kellams. Aye. Mr. Schweigman. Aye. Mr. Weaver. Aye. That is all I have. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for Steve? Okay, next item on the agenda is law director report. I have nothing to report. <clears throat> okay. And the next item on the agenda is an administrator report. I'm happy to report I have no purchase orders. What? Well, you're, you're gone, so. <laughs> yeah, so work stopped apparently. <laughs> no um, profit spending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so Mr. Rubishofer and I tonight attended the sort of Tech signing, or, uh, agreement signing, the township received approximately $4.7 million for two projects. Uh, we have got a nice check here for you. Very nice. Very for, nice. Uh, Kenwood Road sidewalk and uh, road resurfacing project. It's going to be a great addition to the township. Yeah. So this is off the issue seven money from several years ago. So we go and pay an eight sales tax. Some of that comes back to the local community. Sure. Uh, that was done when we were receiving that. It's a, um, it's a reimbursement grant, so uh, the funds come out from us for a thing to be reimbursed for. So that was done. Uh, and the next round, round four, I guess, will be opening up March 1st, uh, due by May 31st. So we will uh, certainly find more uh, projects to, to put in for. Excellent. Uh, other things, just uh, meeting with staff, <clears throat> trying to look at what's changed in four years and see how we can improve certain things. So we're, uh, we're going through a lot of things right now. So uh, hopefully soon we'll have a lot of new innovative things for you guys to talk about. Great. Any questions? Okay. Fiscal officer report. Yes, the township had cash receipts of two million three hundred and twenty-six thousand three hundred and fifty-three dollars and fifty-seven cents. Disbursements of two hundred and twenty-four thousand eighty-eight dollars and twenty-four cents. A complete listing of the receipts and disbursements is available in the packet. Okay, do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Mr. Dieters. Mr. Kellams. Aye. Mr. Schweigman. Aye. Mr. Weaver. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is trustee comments. I will yield. Okay, I have a, a couple. Uh, 
at 5 30 tonight we had a public meeting right here for the euclid avenue <coughs> sidewalk project that's coming up and uh quite a few residents come in everybody in favor of the project very positive feedback so uh, i'd like to thank uh, steve for all his work on that and uh, ed williams from tec was here who's doing the engineering so it was a it was a good open house other than that, I'd like to thank uh, Steve and um, Mike Gould for their work on that sort of grant. I mean, getting 4.4 million is awesome. Uh, Kenwood Road really needs it, and it's uh, it's going to be a great, great addition, great update. And then I'd also like to thank uh, the maintenance crew for their work on the last snow. I mean, this time of year, you never know what you're going to be doing. One day they're <laughs> working on the road, the next day they're Salt mulching, street, mulching, so, mulching. mulching. Yeah, yeah so you never know. I'd like to thank them for a good job. Okay. Um, okay. One thing I wanted to add was uh, your, your trustees and, and uh, quite a number of staff were fortunate enough to travel to Columbus last week for the Ohio Township Association. It's an annual meeting <coughs> of, of thousands of townships around the state of Ohio. Um, it was a good opportunity to not only um, share share some learnings with staff but but yeah. other townships around ohio and quite a good number of seminars and and connections made up there so um we're always looking for for, for good ideas and and, and best practices and, and learnings to bring back <coughs> to the township so uh it was a, it was a good uh a good trip for all okay i think you touched all the bases i am speechless uh Announcements Board of Zoning Appeals meeting is Thursday, February 29th, 6 p.m. here in this building. For all other uh, scheduled meetings and activities for the township, you can check our calendar on, the, on our website. And um, I'd like to get a motion to adjourn into executive session as permitted by Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22G8 to consider confidential information related, relating to specific business strategy and to discuss negotiations with other political subdivisions respecting requests for economic development assistance. And also, we would like to adjourn into executive session as permitted by Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22G1 to consider the employment of a public employee. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Mr. Dieters. Mr. Kellum. Aye. Ms. Schweigman. Aye. Mr. Weaver. Aye. Okay, we will need Greg. Who, who, Greg? Mr. Rudishofer. Rudishofer. Mr. Barbier. Barbier. Okay. Yeah. He's been called worse, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>